Somos Viña. We are Vineyard. We had about 75 people come to this training. So great. And so I taught the five-step prayer model yep. for the, I think, the 1,432nd totally. time. Yes. And so mm-hmm. got, some, you know, word of knowledge, got somebody to come up to get prayer, had three people praying for Just them the whole while I did the play-by-play. I love it. The person who's getting prayer is experiencing a deliverance, and I'm like, you'll notice how this is happening, and that, yes. you know, and everyone is just so amazing. And then, and then we get all the, you know, people lined up. We get ten more people to yeah. pray for. Get four or five people yeah. around each one. You know, everybody got healed, and everyone boom, had boom, these boom. stories. And it just struck me as like, man, I've been doing this yes. for 25 years. Yes. <laughs> And it still works. It's, like it's still, it's still and it's great. And it's and it's great. And these are all yes. new people, new yes. people to the church, new people to this. It. Like a lot of them, new to faith, and they're blown away. Like even now, like and like people are just they can't get enough of telling me their stories about the word of knowledge. And we prayed, and the pain went away. Totally. And I'm like, yeah, that's what happens. My story as a church planter and a leader yeah. is just like have some grit. Just keep doing it. Yeah. Just don't give up. Yeah. Just run the plays, yeah. and just you know, and just continue to right. run the plays. Yeah. And leave room for God to show up, yeah. and He's going to show up, yeah. and He's going to He's going to touch people's lives and yes. and preach the gospel and and invest in people. So and encouraging. God is faithful, and He does it. Welcome to the We Are Vineyard podcast, conversations to help us grow with Jesus and each other. In today's episode, our host Jay Pathak talks to Phil Chorlian, founding pastor of the North Jersey Vineyard Church and Vineyard USA's East Regional Leader. Let's listen in. Well, Phil, thanks for joining us for our podcast good to be with you. We just talked about how you have listened to and memorized every single every one. Yeah. Yeah. I have a filing system. <laughs> They're collated, <laughs> color coordinated. And, then, and you review them daily. So well, I need not tell you how right. this goes because you've obviously memorized all of them, but it's really just hearing your story. And then okay. uh, I, I obviously want to talk a bit about some of the things you've seen in ministry in the spirit, Yeah, but we'll, we'll get there easily. So let's start where where you should start, which is where were you born and grew up? Okay. Well, I mean, I don't know how much, how far we want to go, but all the I way was, in. I was, I was born in New York City. Okay. Um, I'm adopted. Yep. And so it's a, like a crazy story on that. I mean, my mother was a University of Michigan student and met my father, and mm. she got pregnant end of like freshman year. Mm. His, he was, his father was like a military guy, like high up, and, and it was a Vietnam War. And so he's like, I need to go be in the Army. So he mm. ended up being this Army Ranger. And she, it's just a, it's a, crazy, it's a crazy story where he, he found out she was pregnant. He's like, I want, we need to get married. We need to get married. And my, and my birth mother mm. was like, no, that, that's not what... Um, she didn't, she didn't really believe he wanted to do it for the right reasons. Right. So, so she said to him that she had had a miscarriage when she hadn't. Wow. And so then he had two tours of duty in Vietnam. She sent him a letter or something just letting him know that I existed. Oh, my goodness. And he said, like, it really comforts me. I don't know if I'm going to make it out of this. And it comforts me to know I have a son. Oh, my goodness. It, it's like, so it's like this whole weird That's thing. That's wild. And so right after this, so I got in touch with my birth mother like 26 years ago. And so I have a relationship with her. Actually, I oh did, I did uh, performed a wedding for one of my half sisters. So that's like a weird hallmark thing. But you and, ended up reconnecting with her. How did you track her down? Because she gave you for adoption. Gave me up for adoption. Right at birth. Right, right. And then, yeah. then 26 years ago, I'm trying to do the math. Yeah. So you're in your 20s. My, my, right. So my son was just born, you know, and so I'm thinking like, who, you know, cause I, I basically spent my whole I spent, here's the thing, I spent my whole life mm. never having seen anyone who was related to me by blood wow. until my son was born. Yeah. Right? So that's a weird thing. You don't think about being adopted. Yeah. But to me, that was just my life. That was just normal. Yeah, it's the only thing you, you know. Knew, right? It's all I knew. And so I guess maybe, yeah, it kind of stirred up something, you know, wow. where I was like, who am I? You know, like, And you I, just did a records check? Oh, gosh, I can't, you know, this was pre-internet. Right, And so, right. so my, my mother... You know, and, and I don't preface it. My mother, the you know woman yeah, yeah, who raised yeah. me, yeah, she actually, when the social worker, like when during the adoption process, like walked out of the room, my mm. mother peeked at like a file, 
Oh, you know? And so goodness. I knew I knew some stuff. I knew I had a name. <laughs> That's incredible. I had a name. And so, yeah. <laughs> so it's like yeah, totally so, so illegal. I had, yeah, I, got I, it. I, I don't know, illegal. I mean, am I, I'm, am I getting my 91 year old mother in trouble? Like, you know, are people going to knock on the door? But um, I doubt it. But yeah. yeah, so um, so I had a name, and wow. so then there was just some like computer software which had all the names, and so I just put a letter together and sent it out. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and then I got a call. Oh my yeah. goodness! Yeah, this yeah. is incredible. That's a story. So I mean, it's it's a thing. It's it's funny because. Yeah, so she, so she, you know, this was back in nineteen. I was born in sixty six, and so right. it's nineteen sixty five, and so, and so she, you know, no one knew except her parents, and so she, she gets sent out to supposedly go live with her aunt in Brooklyn, right, right. But it's to, it's to have this, you know, to have this child, and so like her siblings didn't know. Wow. And, and so her, when you reappear, yeah, yeah, and her husband didn't know. Oh my yeah. goodness. Yeah. So it was a thing. Dude, so, this is so, intense. so apparently her mother, her mother, I didn't, you know, this is so funny when you said like, oh, we'll just talk about whatever. I didn't know we we're going to talk about this, <laughs> but, um, but I'm going to see, I'm going to see, I've, you know, I haven't seen her since before the pandemic. I'm going to see her, you know, wow. tomorrow because she lives in, lives in Florida. But, um, uh, so tomorrow, mother, cause tomorrow. we're here in Florida yeah, now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Dude. anyway, so, but I've, I mean, I've seen, you know, we've been in touch for, sure. you know, for years, but, um, so her mother calls her cause I forgot this letter. I really didn't think it all the way through. <laughs> Like, I didn't think through exactly what I was doing. You just sent it. Like, I just yeah. sent it. Like, hey, I'm alive. Like, hey, does anyone know she's got a brother named this and this and the other thing? And so then apparently her brother called and and was, you know, called his called his mother and was like, what the heck is this? Is, this is, you know. Because you're thinking, obviously, this is a what, part of her story. So I don't know she what probably I was, has told I don't know people, what I, but then she had. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. Like, I really, I honestly, like, once I finally got in touch with her and heard, like, what I did oh. to this woman's life, oh, I was you, like, yeah. oh, I didn't think this She's all the way up through. She's upended. Yeah. Because, because her, mother, her mother called her and said, well, the other shoe is dropped. <laughs> called her because they said God. Because she knew, right. So the mother knew, right. right? So and she's and like, then her guess father what? Had, had passed away years ago. Everybody earlier. knows now. But it was, but it was, I mean, it was really, it was really one of those things that was interesting because her older brother, who was a, a, a philosophy professor, had been involved mm. in ministry, was actually one of the guys who like went, went down to register African-Americans, you wow. know, during the civil rights movement. And mm. he had died just like a year before I came on the scene in a scuba accident. And, oh and this God. kind of, I don't know, it was just like this whole thing where they just kind of saw it as like, they have kind of maybe like a mainline faith. Right, right. You know? So um, church background. Church, yeah. Right. And so they saw it really as... Um, providential. I mean, this is probably it's providential. God. Yeah. And like I said, and then a couple of years later, well, here's a weird, here's a weird thing. But, when but, you think so, about. but where, where were they living? So like they live in the same general area? Yeah. They were all from Michigan. Okay. So they're yeah. from Michigan, mm -hmm. but then you're raised. I'm raised in, in New Jersey. In Jersey. Right outside of New York City. So the adoption, your uh, adoptive right. parent came in and yeah. got you in Michigan. No, no, no. She came out, she, she came out to to Brooklyn, got it, and was staying in some, I don't know if it was a home or something, right. because it was a totally different. I see, and gave up for adoption gave up on for the East adoption Coast, on the East Coast. Got it. Now, I and see. then I was adopted. I was I born see, in I a see. hospital in New York City. Wow. Yeah. And then you know, raised in New Jersey, right outside of right outside of New York City. So, dude, that is yeah. so. So that's cool. That's, that's a yeah. That's a it's a story. It's a thing. Well, and and in, in, what's so interesting is now. I mean, yours was a bit ago, but yeah. now with the ancestry DNA thing. Yeah. The amount of people that oh, yeah. are having these kinds yeah. of like, I, I have a friend literally, I was just literally talking to two weeks ago. He'd been adopted. And then with the ancestry thing, it just pops like this yeah. person is yeah. probably oh, yeah. your brother. Sure. Now, more than probably like, like, right. like it's <laughs> right. Their DNA don't lie. So then he's yeah. staring at it like, yeah, do I reach to it? Like what, yeah. you know, what are, what are the rules? So anyway, he reaches, yeah. figures out all this stuff about his family, but here's where it gets awkward. They didn't know he existed because their father, which is the connection, had slept with his mother, who they think may have been a prostitute. Oh, dear. When she was in her 40s and he was 25. Yeah. So so now they're trying to piece together like, well, what 
year was this and where was it? And, there, and, and, and this guy has been married. So now is it right to now have to have him real like have to say, you know, before I married you, I slept with a prostitute. Right. Who apparently had a kid that I didn't know, which is my friend. <laughs> so do we do we swing back in and like right. do right. do all of that? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, well, it's yeah. So Dan, that's <laughs> not, that was my situation was a little less complicated. Yeah, yeah, it was. It yeah, was. Yeah. But, but still but, but still but still it was new. There was a new It was. It was. Right. And I had I had just like, you know, just like carpet bombed this poor woman's right. life. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so you just and I, but again I was just kind of like when I finally talked to her, she said it was like, Oh, oh yeah. That's, yeah. I'm i I'm sorry about I'm, that. But she's like, No, I'm so this is so wonderful. This is this great. Is so, yeah. But was so here's a weird thing. When you think about like DNA and ancestry, all this I stuff, know. right? And and like nature nurture. Yeah. So her siblings, they're like, So who is this guy? And, yeah. and she's trying to say because she dated my father in high school, but I mean in college, but they didn't really have right. that long of a relationship. And so apparently he had come home for Thanksgiving with her at one point. Oh, okay. And so my aunt was like, I don't remember who this person is. Right. But then the moment, like when I finally drove when out you there, showed up. when I showed up and I walked in, my aunt remembered my father immediately because I carry myself just like oh, him. Oh my goodness. This man I never met. Isn't that Dude, weird? this that weird? is so That's weird. wild. That's weird. It's yeah. so weird. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So anyway. Okay. So that, yes. that was all very. So, in, I, I would like to rabbit do trail. Two more hours okay. there. But but instead instead <laughs> I hear you. instead you are raised yeah. by your parents in yes, Jersey in New Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And they you're raised with faith. You're yeah. raised around life yeah. of God. I'm raised. You know my my mother. Uh, my mother is a classical uh, pianist, oh. and she was you know kind of a little bit of a uh, you know she went to Juilliard when she was like 15 or 16, wow. and so really like very accomplished. Yeah, and, I'd say. And uh, she, my father is actually a violinist. Wow. Um, but he ended up he ended up being an engineer. You know, kind mm. of kind of went the safe safe route for right. that. But grew up with music and my mother was the organist kind of choir director in the evangelical free church that i grew up in wow and so so i grew up in the conservative evangelical church and you grew up with brothers and sisters i have one older sister one older sister who's okay. also adopted okay yeah yeah that's cool okay yeah. so you're raised in this ev do you say evangelical, evangelical free church so yeah. ev free mm -hmm. church yeah and for you, is that like a positive, like, yeah. is it positive? Are you like, man, this is the best and I yeah. just love Jesus? Or was it like, man, I don't know, this seems No, weird. I don't want anything to do with it. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, okay. you know, it's funny. Okay. I remember, you know, there was this, like, I, you know, I got dragged to VBS and all this kind of right, stuff. Right, right, right. And, but didn't want to go to the, you know, didn't want to go to the youth group, didn't mm -hmm. want to do that because right. I was, you know, I was just doing my thing in high school and wrestling and this. Yeah. Like I didn't, I didn't, didn't see this as relevant to my life. Right. But I do remember though, going to this, the, the pastor would have this kind of like confirmation class for, mm. I think when you were in eighth grade, the mm. end of eighth grade. And it was, I remember sitting in this guy's office, there were about six of us in that, that age group and hearing the gospel, mm. like he explained the gospel. I understood it like, Oh, you know, beyond like the Sunday school flannel right. board and stuff. I was like, Oh, oh, I, I need to accept that Jesus, yeah. this is what I do. But I remember thinking like, I, I don't want to do that now, but maybe, so, but someday I will, but I don't want to do that now. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and yeah, anyway, to yeah. crawl inside your own mind again and be like, right. Why, why not? What did I, yeah. uh, you had other things you wanted to do first. Well, I think that what it was is I didn't, for whatever reason, I'm sure there were really good people around and all that, but I didn't see any, I, I wasn't seeing anyone who was relevant to me, right. I, I didn't see an expression of faith. It seemed too said, far away. Where I right. said, "Ooh, I can do that." Right. You know, that's. It was kind of more like, well, I'll, you know, it's like it was in like the seven, you know, the eighties. So it's like a lot about like Hal Lindsey, the the rapture. <laughs> the, it was like, well, if you know, if the rapture happens, I'll accept Jesus, or you know, but but I don't really see it's not urgent enough. Yeah, yeah. It's and there's just, no and I don't, model. I don't want right. to just sit in a corner and just wait for Jesus to come back. I'll, maybe I'll do that later, but not now. But yeah. then you're just hanging out with friends, doing your life, right? Yeah. So then you graduate, and apparently your folks obviously are taking it seriously enough to yeah. trying to get you yeah. into stuff. No, to and... back up a little bit more, I mean, yeah. so what happened at the end of my junior year of high school, hmm. I started, God just started like lambasting me with hmm. relevant Christians, you know? So wow. like, uh, there's this one guy, I'm, his name is Danny Noah. 
And Danny was probably about 25, 26 years old. And mm. he had been like, he'd play, he'd, he'd like, you know, he'd had a cup of coffee on the New York Giants and was on the practice squad or whatever. And he, mm. he was huge. And so I'm, so I go to this gym and he was, he was like the trainer for all the high school athletes. Wow. And he was really cool. Like you wanted Danny right. to train you. And yeah. Danny was, and Danny was a strong Christian. Like, huh. like he'd go into the office and put like Keith Green music on or, you know, Christian. <laughs> I'd be really like, Danny, turn that blanket blank yeah, stuff yeah, off. Right. But everybody knew Danny. Yeah, just, I guess that's and what so, he does. And so one day, you know, he's, 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 I'm working out with him and he starts sharing the gospel with me. And I'm just like, oh, you know, I said, I, I go to this church. He knew the church. And he's like, oh, so you're a Christian. And I'm like. I mean, yeah, sort of. Yeah, you know? <laughs> Depends on what <laughs> you mean. Sorta. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then there was another time. There was a, like mm. shortly after that. I had these woods by my house, and so I was, I was in the, I was in, I was in the woods smoking cigarettes. You know, so I could like, <laughs> like I had to do it so no one of my neighbors could. So you go into the woods, right? And cigarettes. Totally. So I'm just there, kind of by myself, just smoking by myself, smoking a cigarette. And then this like this hippie, like this Jesus Revolution type hippie, because there was actually this church in my area that got impacted that had really you know, yeah, and he was just straight up, he was from that church. And so this this total Jesus hippie just comes walking through the woods and starts talking to me as I'm like, you know, sixteen years what old. What in the a world? Cigarette. This is like and, a no, seriously, and dream starts, or something. And he starts telling me about Jesus. <laughs> wait, wait, no, hold on, hold on. Back up, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Wait. This is like a this is like a like a few weeks after Danny <laughs> Noah was like, You're a Christian. I know, and but I'm like but hold on, yeah, hold on. No, it's how the hippie in the woods. I tell people in, the, in my church know about the hippie in the so woods. Wait, wait, wait. But hold yeah. on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, but never so saw he, him again. He might have been an. Agent. I know that's not no, serious. Like, I mean, I know this. Is, I know. <laughs> that's why I got to slow it down a little bit. You're literally just sitting there smoking. Yeah, so you're having a cigarette. You're yeah. sixteen, seventeen, yeah. wherever you are. So, yeah, seventeen, just like Jesse. And he just comes walking along, just walking through and the woods. First words are just walking the earth. What's up, man? He's like, hey, man, how you doing? And I'm like. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> Want a cigarette? And then, and then he just starts doing classic. Like, but no, wait, what? Hey, have you ever considered if you were to die tonight? Probably. I mean, I don't remember exactly <laughs> Something what his that strategy direct. was. Well, but I mean, but it was probably for spiritual lawsy, right? You know what I so mean? So just it was right in. Just, just like you know, just kind of like hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell this loser <laughs> smoking a cigarette in the woods by himself because <laughs> obviously he's leading a sad life. I'm gonna tell him about Jesus, dude. I yeah. love this he, so much. And and I and I remember. I mean, this is the thing. It had an impact. Like there was a Holy Spirit. You know what I mean? It yeah. was kind of like you can, you know, you like God, like gets you can run but you can't hide and so i remember i remember going home and having dinner you know, <laughs> hold, think, hold on hold on i need more i need more all, all, right, right, I gotta, I, all right let's go so, so he so, so he you start in like some classic whatever and yeah. you engage it a little bit yeah and then he's like all right man yeah i'd be praised with seal oh he does oh yeah we pray so you get okay, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. No. oh so you get to the whole no, thing we do the thing i mean i knew the thing you know, yeah, but I you remember, actually got to but it. I, but I, yeah, he's yeah. like, do you want to pray with I'm me like, right now? I'm like, I'll pray with you, right? Yeah. You should. Do you want to receive Jesus Christ yeah. right now? And you're yeah. like, yeah. And I'm like, I think I, I think I need to. I think I'm ready. I think I've been running. <laughs> so, and so then I come back. This is so then incredible. I go home. And now I remember that it's funny because you don't think about, but I'm remembering this now. So I go home to have dinner. Thinking, and of course, I've been smoking cigarettes in the woods. Right. They don't, like, and I think my parents don't know that because yeah. you know I because yeah, I brush my teeth, yeah. right? Exactly. <laughs> but I but I'm sitting at dinner, right. and I remember I told my parents like, I actually just gave my life to Jesus, and my mom's like, "What? You did what?" And I was like, "Yeah, I, I met this hip, I met this guy in the woods, <laughs> Dude, this, and we prayed this, together. And I think this, I think I want I think I want to go to youth group tonight." Oh my goodness! Yeah. It's kind of like just that. the lights turned yeah. on. Yeah, the lights, the light. I mean, I got so wait. I, I hold got, on, hold on. I got. Yeah, I, got not, I mean, not, I got like saved. I got like I. Yeah. Met, and it was like, and it wasn't. It wasn't. It was a series of things. Sure, sure. That's and what I hear. And then another another thing when I said about like finding someone, and this actually is like a direct line of how I ended up in the vineyard. I came across Keith Green mm. at around that, like around yeah. that time, like maybe post hippie or, you know what I, like, right. and I really started to get into it. And there was something about that. I was like, this yeah. kind of radical, like radical Christianity, like all in Christianity, yeah. I can give my life to this. Yeah, it's attractive. I can give, like, I want to give my life to this. Wow. And so, and so, yeah. So I, I, I was like, at some point, you know, in that time, I was, I went all in, you know, and it's like the hippie played a part, Danny played a part, Keith played a part, but it was like all of a sudden I was, I, there's, I, have, I was all I, in I, with Jesus. Hold on. I have, I have more things about this. Okay. Did you ever figure out who that guy? No, I never met him again. No. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. So this dude. Yeah. 
just milling around in the, in the woods yeah, in Jersey. That. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, he had red hair and he wore one of those like olive green military jackets. Like he was a hippie. He was straight Dude. up. Dude. And he just goes, goes for it. And I don't know. here's what's so amazing to me yeah. to think about yeah. with stuff like this. Like you, you, me, people we know. I mean, if you added them up over my lifetime, you know, since I really was following Jesus till now. I bet I've had, oh gosh, I don't know, a thousand moments with people, hmm. like uh, at a party, at a store, in a yeah. hotel, lobby, yeah. uh, you know, just maybe, yeah. maybe more than a thousand when I think about yeah. it. And of all the thousand, there's like a handful. That I kind of know, yeah. man, a thing happened Straight here. Up. Yep. You changed your life mm -hmm. and they follow up again. Yep. But it's so encouraging to mm. think that there could be hundreds of people. Yeah. And they're somewhere telling a story right now is like, I don't know, this like kind of Middle Eastern ethnically ambiguous guy. <laughs> 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 Talk to me in a hotel lobby. Yeah. And then he left yeah. and this lanky fellow. <laughs> <laughs> and it was on I was matched up with him on this golf course and yeah. we finished up. Hit the and ball he straight. Prayed. Weirdest swing I've ever seen. But man, could he hit the ball? <laughs> and he and he prayed with me in the parking lot afterward. And I don't know. I have no idea yeah. where he came from. Yeah. Like to think that that, no. the, that those little yeah. things no, over time. Yeah. There's no way you know the a, end. And, the, and the, right, and to the to your point, like the hippie has no idea. He has no idea. He doesn't know that he that God used him. Like here I am, forty years later, exactly, telling a story about my life, talking yes. about the hippie, because to him that was just Thursday afternoon. Yeah, you know well, what I mean. He just like he just sowed the seed. He just well, walked it, around it, sowing what, the seed. What we don't know is, was that like the one time he did that? Like, I don't like, think so. Well, but listen, man, think Maybe. how many think how many times we're with people and we do a training yeah. on a thing. Okay. And they're like, I'm gonna go do that. Today. I'm gonna do it. And then they're like, Oh, that was yeah. hard or weird. I'm not doing that again. I don't know. You don't know. You don't know. You have no idea. You just have no, I have no idea. idea. I have no but, idea. But but also to your point, it was more than one touch. It was exactly and it was right because I so knew it's the a bunch gospel of people. and I was I was yeah. like, you know, like I, I, I remember, love it. you know, I just I just live my life knowing that like at some some point I'm going to give my life to Jesus. Yeah. I don't know when, probably when I'm really old. Right. But what, what ended up, so here's what happened. So from that point, first of all, it was this really, really nice, like I, I went, I, I'm, I was all in because I'm an all in. Like I find right. something I'm all we're in. Doing so it, I'm we're like doing carrying it. my Bible to, to school. I love I'm it. preaching. I'm doing the whole thing. Dude. I got someone to sew like a dove and a cross in my leather jacket. <laughs> like I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> no, seriously. I Are still there have pictures? I thought I still have it. Oh, I don't dude, know. I, I love it. It. It, was, it. it was cool. It was a cool jacket. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. So, and so then there was this really nice girl I was dating. And so we, you know, I broke up with her because you can't, you know, I'm, I'm a Christian now. We're yeah, going for it. yeah, we're starting And so I remember over, yeah. someone said, you know, said this girl's, this girl's name. It's like, I don't know what she did to Chorlean, but she made him a priest. <laughs> and it's like, no, it's not, you know. So anyway, so I, I, I so I started, it. I started, like I'm witnessing. And, wow. And, and it's, you know, like New Jersey. It's, it's really, it's like Italian Catholic, Irish Catholic. Right. I remember one time, you know, we're supposed to have gym class, right? And it's like, we're not having gym class. So we're just sitting in the, sitting on the bleachers, you right. know, doing study hall. And so I'm reading my Bible. And I remember this guy all of a sudden, he's like, what the blankety blank are you doing? What are you doing with that here? And so he's all mad that yeah. I'm reading the book because right. he'd been sitting behind there cursing. Wow. And if he knew that right. he was near a Bible, yeah. he wouldn't have done yeah, that. That's like magic. So, right, so right. how dare I right. bring something sacred? Oh, like that into dude. a space that it doesn't deserve. So you know, fascinating. Doesn't belong. So, so we started my, my senior year. I started, so I, I, I actually, that summer, mm. I went to Last Days Ministries High School camp because I was all in Keith Green. That's Keith dude, Green, I, if anyone knows who that well, is. Oh, but yeah. I'm hungry, right? Yeah. I got, I really. Just sight unseen. You don't even know anybody. Oh, I don't know anybody. I'm going. I'm, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want the real deal. I want power. I want, you all know. All of it. And, and your parents so, are like, yeah. They're like, 
do we it. like this. <laughs> he doesn't come back smelling like cigarettes from the woods as much. No, there was a moment though where I would like I was so like on fire that I'd be like to my mom, like, Mom, have you have you shared the gospel with Mrs. Rudolph? Have you it's like they live right across the street? Have She's you like, told them about hey, Jesus? Just like simmer down. I think simmer I liked you better when you came <laughs> yeah, home drunk. Totally. Smelling like smelling like cigarettes. I love it. You're kind of bugging this me right is now. annoying. Okay. But anyway, so I so went you go out to last to, I went out to this, like, camp. this two week high school camp and I love it. And this guy, you know, going back to the adoption story, this guy named John Dawson, who, and you know, you know, you're friends with Floyd McClung. So I yeah. like, yeah, that whole crew, like they were. Wait like, a minute. This is um, Taking Our Cities for God. Guy wrote that book. Yeah. Yeah. That John Dawson. Father Heart of God, though. He did Father, Father Heart, Heart of God as Floyd well. McClung. That was a, yeah. Yeah. He so, spoke at our church once. John Dawson did. He did. Okay. So, yeah. So, yeah. So one of the most, two, two incredibly significant Holy Spirit moments. Huh. So, I'm getting get emotional because John, so he's teaching on the Father Heart of God. I never heard yeah. such a thing. Never heard like, he's your father. He loves yeah. you. He's a faithful father. He's a kind father. Mm. And so I, you know, at that time, you know, I had my leather jacket. I thought I'd be my denim jacket with the dove and the cross. I thought I was cool. But I was, you know, I was broke. I was, you know, I was, yeah. fa- I was father, you know, in some ways, like I have a, my, my, my adopted, my father is a wonderful man, but yeah. we didn't connect. We were about as, right. we were about as different as two human beings could mm. be. And, but I'm hearing about, and it's all, all of a sudden, God is revealing himself to me that he's my father. Wow. And I, I broke and it wasn't just, I started, it wasn't like a tear. Like a gentle cry, right? It was like snot running out of my nose. It was like undone, like God pouring himself into this fatherless kid and who didn't know who he was and was mm. trying, and it was just like so real. And it was yeah. so what I, I was just, I was like the rest of the day, I was just stunned. Wow. And then sometime around that going back. So they had Leonard Ravenhill, if anybody knows, oh, he was gosh, this like old yeah. school revivalist dude. dude right? But I read his books. And so like, uh, I read his books and I remember him read saying like, if you don't pray, any minister who doesn't pray for two hours a day isn't worth their salt, right? Oh so I'm like, All right, I'm going to pray for two hours a day. Dude. Like, you know, so I get up, I get up at 5.30 in the morning to pray for two wow. hours. I get through three minutes and I'd be like, I don't know what else to pray <laughs> so for. I'm out of things. I've got to do another hour and 57 <laughs> minutes because Leonard Ravenhill said I, I need do? to pray for two yeah. hours. Right. I don't know. I'll just let repeat me, those Let me get the minutes. phone book because they used yeah, to have this thing called the phone book. <laughs> but anyway, so Leonard Ravenhill preached and it wasn't, you know, he's, he's just did what he did. But I went back, it was in it was in East Texas, in Lindale, Texas. And and so I remember I said to the guy, I was like, I can't <laughs> wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. The camp is in East Texas? Yeah, Lindale, Texas. So yeah. you go from Jersey. I was hungry. I wanted Dude, God. No, no, this seriously. Is I wanted incredible. No, because I was like, I want the you real drive thing. There? I want, no, I no, I flew. I mean Okay, okay. I was, <laughs> I, just, I was the first, just, first, first, first <laughs> plane ride. I actually, yeah, I guess went, you know, went on a plane by myself to Dallas and yeah, 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 yeah. This yeah. is oh yeah, no, I was hungry. Amazing. I was hungry. Okay, yeah. so you go to East. So Texas. anyway, so so I'm sitting. So I'm like, I said to the guy, I was like, I need to just see God for a little bit. And so I'm sitting on this uh, fence under this beautiful East Texas sky, and just mm. saying, God, I want to be, I want to be baptized. I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Wow. Because I one of the first books I read when I became a Christian was A. W. Tozer's The Pursuit of God, and I'm like, what this is what I want. Book. This is what I'm after. Yes. And I, it's funny because I remember I went to my senior pastor at the time, this EV, you know, and I was like, I've read this book by A.W. Tozer. Yeah, it was amazing. I need to be filled with the Spirit. Yeah, and he yeah. said, no, oh, no, no, be careful. Tozer preaches experience. That's dangerous. And I'm like, <laughs> three weeks ago, I was getting high in the woods. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't know. You know this I don't is, think yeah, you don't know what dangerous you, is. Yeah. Yeah. You may not know where I'm coming from. <laughs> but anyway, wow. so I was hungry. And then and then I, I just, I got blitz i got filled wow. like the, the power of god came on me wow and i fell off the fence and i was like i don't even know how long i was laying in the grass but i was laying there for a while it's wow. just like wave after wave just the power of the holy spirit wow and i got up different you know like from that like you know, like yeah. father's love yeah power of the holy spirit and that's why i came back to my high school and i'm mm. just like i'm in and i started a bible study that would meet in the cafeteria on Wednesday mornings. And this is pre, like, this is 1984. So nobody knows, like, what rights are, this or that. But I'd have 30 or 40 kids come to the Bible study in the cafeteria. And kids are getting saved. Kids are, you know. And then one day, 
somebody from the Catholic, you know, the local Catholic church who'd been coming, I guess, told his priest. So one day in the cafeteria, the priest he shows up in full, like, in. you know, priest regalia. Oh, my goodness. So I get called in the principal's office for that one, right? And so the Because princi- the priest shouldn't be the, there. Right, right. So, the, so, so I remember the principal, he's like, you know, Phil, I've, I've heard about, you know, how your life has changed because I used to get called into the principal's office for other things. <laughs> right. And he's like, it's really good. He's like, I'm, I'm, I'm Catholic and I really respect what you're doing. He said, but, but, but there was a priest in my high school today. And I was like, yeah, I know. We just showed yeah, up. I don't he know. Seemed, it was weird. He isn't seemed it? nice, but he seemed cool. I don't, and he's like, no, no, no. That, that can't, can't happen. That can't happen. We cannot have priests. And I, I'm like, so should I tell him not to come? I didn't you know? invite him. I yeah. didn't invite him. <laughs> but but it was wow. it was cool. And it was, yeah, you know, it was it was it was a it was a time. It was like it was cool. You know, that it was just so like God great. just kind of got a hold of me and you know, and you get like when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, it's yeah. like it's, di- it's, it's, it's different. different. It's different. Yeah. Things are different. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, your uh, life changes. Yeah. Well, and, yeah. and even the, uh, what I love about your story, which is similar to so many stories in mine as well, is you're not in the right like room. This isn't like, you know, the drums are gently playing and no. and the, the the keyboards are playing in the right minor chord and yeah. the, the fog is still sort of settling from the fog machine from worship this there is no emotional manipulation there's no no gentle tones of some guy's voice praying mm-hmm. You're just, you're literally sitting on a fence. Sitting on a fence. <laughs> like really hungry. Really hungry. Dude, really I hungry. Yeah. love yeah. it. Yeah. And it gives faith to people. I mean, I'm sure there's any number of folks who could be listening to us right now. You can just say, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, nobody laid hands on me. Nothing. Nobody, yeah, no. Dude, I love it. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah. so you have this incredible high school. You're finishing high school, yeah. like flying yeah. through the sky. Yeah. So. Do you graduate and think, well, I'm obviously going to be a pastor? I, I went to Wyoming. Okay. That's right. Because I've been John <laughs> Dawson. Thing. And Let's Clark, go. I was like, I'm, totally. I, want, I want in. And so I did back to back to the same place, back to Lindale, Texas. And so wow. I did I did a, de- a discipleship training school in the School of Evangelism. And it was it was wonderful. It was I a fantastic was. year. And where'd you go? Did you travel? Did you go? Went to Guatemala. Guatemala. Got to go to Guatemala. Perfect. And then, uh, <laughs> and then, I don't know, this is, the, then YWAM had this thing years ago, this like evangelistic drama thing that they would do called Toymaker and Son. You ever hear of <laughs> Toymaker and Son? It was this like allegorical, like presentation. Right. Of the yeah. Gospel. You do a drama so, in the street. So I was, I was the son. And uh, I, I was, love it. <laughs> so, I you, so I, we traveled all around and all around the, the, the United States doing this. It was very evangelistically powerful. Sure. But my thing though, has always been like an all in type guy. So, so I want like the beating scene, like when the son gets beaten and crucified, like, like do it. I'm, just, I'm like, like just beat hit me living. <laughs> just like actually hit this. me. <laughs> so anyway, so I would do this. I would do, I would go all in. Right. And so I did this whole thing, like they're, they're beating me up and everything. And I would do this thing where I would like put my hands, like my hands down and then whack my head on the ground. Oh my gosh. And, uh, but I, but my hands, I'd hit, you know, being, I'd hit my hand, so I'd be all right. You'd hit your hand. Hit wait, wait. Hands. So you'd hit your head on the, the hand, hand on the ground. Me. Right. So I'd be like, you know, boom, <laughs> like hit my, right. So I'd be all right, but it would look really good. Right. It was like, people would be like, I hear the gas. Like, oh. I hear the gas, right. you know? And so this one time it was on a concrete, like hard concrete zone. And I put my hands like too far apart. And, and so you just I whacked, smacked the I concrete. totally just got a concussion. So I came up, everything spilled. <laughs> So then when I'm like, when I'm like hanging on the cross, you can't you know, make I'm this hanging stuff on the up. cross. And so somebody, I said, just like, I'm not okay. <laughs> I don't and I had this, of... I had this like serious, I somehow got through it, but anyway, so it was, but it was a wonderful, it was, it was, it was really, it was wonderful. It was a wonderful year. What a gift. I was so excited. And, and I was, I was all set. Like my thing is I wanted to go to the work, to what, you know, just a really hardcore place and bring the gospel. That's what I like, like, where's the, where's the, you know, so where, where did you plan to go? So at the time I'd read about this huge garbage dump in the Philippines hmm. that people were living on and just, you know, like they're very, you know, really go there. crazy impoverished people. So I'm going to go there and I'm going to preach the gospel there. Wow. And so I actually, I was accepted to go to their school in Hawaii to get basic healthcare hmm. training. 
mm. so that I could go and do basic yeah, health care and plant do. churches yeah, and yeah, be helpful. Yeah. Right. But, you know, my parents kind of did the full court press. They're to, like, hey, hold on. I got to go to college. You got to go. If I don't go to college, you know, so it was yeah. like, so they do the thing, like I come home for a break and I was all set to do this thing. Yeah. And so like, they'd have like someone from my church who they knew I really respected. And I realized like, oh, oh, this is an intervention. Oh, this is a setup. Right. Yeah. Mr. Nyborg is here to tell me <laughs> that if I'm going to serve God, I need to go to college. Go to college. I need to yeah. go to college. So, yeah. so, I mean, yeah. So I ended up. I ended up, uh, I was, I, when I was the, my senior year of high school, there was almost like a revival that went, like there was yeah, like stuff happening in the youth way. group and stuff. And then, and then like things started, you know, I don't know, like a lot of kids started like wandering away from the Lord and this right. and that. And so, and so I got an invitation to come back and help with the youth group. Hmm. And so I said, okay, that's what I'll do. I'll go, I'll go to a Christian right. college, yep. Naya College, which was nearby. And I'll help with the youth group, yeah. but it's really about I want to, you know, college. I'll eventually do the college next time. college, right. but I want to come back and, and do right. the youth group thing. Wow. So that's how I so I ended up back in Jersey. Oh, that's after cool. And then you go to school yeah. and you're you're in college. What are you oh studying? Gosh. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> what's well, like like how long do we have? Like, like, I want to get to the vineyard. Thing <laughs> no, I will. I'm in, no, I'm in charge. I trust you. You are in charge, <laughs> and you know what's up. I don't have to worry about you. That's so okay. Good. I was. It's uh, yeah. No. You, all right. All right. So. <laughs> So I'm thinking, you know, ministry. So I'm doing the Greek. Yeah. I'm doing, you know, theology. And I'm yep. undeclared, trying to figure out what that's going to be. Yep. But probably thinking missions, wanting to, you know, yeah. do that. But what ended What ended up, you know, I think, I would, I, what ended up, like, it's, it's hard for me to even think exactly, like, what was going on. I think part, <laughs> no, seriously, but I think I, part of it, because I ended up completely falling away from God. Yeah. And so, spending my early 20s completely. So you have this meteoric Meteoric. Rise. Right. Then you're back into doing youth stuff. So yeah. you think, okay, this is yeah, a yeah. continuation, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but then you have a crash. Well, right. And I think part of it, you know, I think part of it is that I put so much pressure on myself yeah. that I really thought that I really kind of thought that I was like, I'm, I'm going to bring in revival. <laughs> I'm going to, right? you know, and I think that part of it was like, mm, I'm 19 and yeah. I'm just like putting too much pressure yeah, on myself. Yeah, you're just a kid. Right. And I think at the time, you know, like, like the Christian college I was at, it was pretty, it was very dry spiritually. Right. And I just had, I remember sitting in this like theology class and I was kind of, and it was so boring and it was so, and I couldn't reconcile how much life there was on yes. the other, you know, my YWAM training in this. And I remember thinking like, if this is Christianity, I don't want it. Yeah, this is so you know. Dumb. And I was going through stuff personally, and mm. and I and I it just like, you know, I I mean, I I kind of my freshman year I hung on, and then I got to I there was a there was a ministry team that formed out of my YWAM year, and so I went and mm. spent the summer with them, and got got like a charge to like, all right, let's you know, I'm ready mm. to go back again. But then by by the end of by the end of the next year, I was just I was done. Yeah, and I remember. I was working at a Domino's pizza, which by the way, I just want to say delivering pizzas when there was no GPS, that's it real, was a thing. Like, that's like real you, work. You would like you find out where it was good. You'd have a map and you'd memorize the map. <laughs> and then you had a lot of quarters in your car if you needed to pull over and, to and make a phone call. And but anyway, like, that's, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm lost. Yeah. yeah. So, so anyway, so, so I remember, you know, we're closing up and this guy who didn't, who just started working there was like, Hey, we're we're gonna we're gonna get high after work. Do you want to get high? Yeah. And I remember, and it was a very distinct because I'm like really struggling. Yeah. And I just was like, Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. And that was in that moment, I was done with Christianity. Isn't it I was amazing? Done. I was, and that was like, I'm I'm out. Well, and I think so many people know that feeling. I mean, I I can remember moments, and I, and I can do that me that that both ways. Like I can remember going to walk into a party after I met Christ, I've had this encounter with Jesus, and I'm going to just go back to doing the thing I do, and grabbing the doorknob, and just in my body knowing, if you do this, it's as though yeah. you don't believe yeah. anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, 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 I, and I remember it feeling like a literal coin toss, like, hmm, mm. I don't know. Yeah. And then, by grace, just taking my hand off the knob and going back to my car. And I think, wow. okay, yeah. if I don't do that yeah. then, because yeah. it's a lot of small decisions, That's right? right? It's, right. It's, it's, yeah. it's not like the yeah. massive moment. Right. Like the, what you're describing there, like I'm delivering, I mean, it's like a... Yeah. No, and it was like in that moment, like I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to get high, but it was, but that was a big deal. But though. you like, could that feel was, it. That's right. I was making a decision. I've made a choice. I was yeah. making a decision. Wow. 
And so then I spent, you know, I spent years like running from God. And yeah. I, I went from being like a spiritual leader on campus to I got suspended and you know, because like, not for any big things, but just for drinking, but just like or, not you know, trying, start yeah. smoking again. Right. You know, I need another hippie to come and help me to not smoke. <laughs> yeah, but woods. yeah, you right. know, and it's like when you're like when you're when you're when you're smoking yeah. a pack of cigarettes a day at a Christian school, right. like, and you yeah. think like I have toothpaste at my glove compartment. They, yeah. they won't know. <laughs> yeah. It's like no, no, they, they know. notice. They know. They notice. They know. But you know. So anyway, so yeah, and it was you know during that it, during that time it was the other interesting. I got I got really into acting. Right. And so that's when that's when I was pursuing yes. acting in New yes. York City. And so I wow. was you know, so that was I was I was in the game, but but I do though, I had moments, I remember one time specifically mm. where I was at this party and everybody's, you know, it's like it's great, it's a fun party. Yes. Yeah. You know, like some cute girl is talking to me yeah, and it's like totally. But I remember sitting there like looking at it and being like I wish I didn't know what I know. Yes. Because I know there's more than this. And I'm yes. looking at everyone else who's just having a and good time. And they're just time. like, this is great. And I'm yeah. just like, I wish I didn't know what yeah. I know. And yeah. so even though I was trying to run from God, it was like it was still, yeah, he's I still, still knew pursuing that, you. I still knew that I turned my back on what wow. was real and what was life. Dude, and, that is incredible. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. you're kind of milling around, doing acting, doing yeah. this and that. Mm -hmm. What kind of what pulled, me pulled back you in? back in? So Norma and I, we actually, uh, we got, in, we met at college mm. and, and Norma, you know, I think she would fair to say that like, she was just kind of a nominal, you right. know, kind of Christian kid, you know, the kind of, yep. the kind of kid, the kind of kid who would like go to youth group on Friday night and then, and then get drunk at a party on Saturday night. Yep. And, and so we started, we started dating and I was kind of, and it was like you said about those, those moments. I feel like in some ways Norma kept me from kind of going off the deep end. Right. That that if it wasn't for Norma as like right. God's grace as an anchor in my life, that I probably would have gone into the city. I mean, gone further. I mean, there was there was one point where we'd broken up, and I was going to go and start living with some of my acting friends in the village. Mm. And I really think if I'd done that, I would have I would have been down a road to like addiction issues. Yeah. Because it would have just been partying. Yeah. Because like you're all, right there. Totally. All the all the time. Yeah. And so, so I think that's, that's really what it was. But I remember at one point, you know, so, okay, so, so we're, we're, we're dating, we're engaged and she always, she wanted to go to church. Right. Mm. And so, and so, um, it's funny, this stuff always coming back to me, but, uh, so, so we found this, there was this, uh, this Nazarene church mm. that a friend of ours. Oh, so, so I had some old friends from YWAM mm. move out here. Wow. And they just knew me as spiritual, like yeah, they knew film. you as that guy. They didn't guy. know you, yeah. Phil, <laughs> new and less improved Phil. They didn't know that guy. Exactly. And so, and so they were like, "Hey, we found this great church. You guys should, you should come." come. Because they're like, probably like, "I don't know what happened to Phil." Yeah, but, yeah. And so, so we'd we'd go to it, and it was good. And I remember thinking, like, "Oh, this guy's real. This guy's mm. the pastor." You know, uh, yeah. Frank Bellella, uh, church is still there. You know, Living Word Community mm. Church in Nazarene, which which was actually planted. Out of the church that the hippie went to, really? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. it was like this thing. There's yeah, this, there's this like a move. There, there right. was a move of God that was all right. you know, and so I'd be like, oh, this is this is this seems like real. This is like real Christianity. This uh, is cool. There it is. Yeah, but I'm not. You know, I'm not. I'm not I know, into I don't know it, if I believe it cool. anymore. Yeah, but it's right. like, But Norma would always. So we so we had this thing where she would. She lived up in Nyack, which was like 25 minutes away from where I lived. Right. And so she'd be like, all right, she'd call. She'd be like, all right, I'm leaving now. We're gonna go. To, we're gonna go to church, and uh, and so I would go back to bed. And then she'd get there and I would be ready to go to church and then she'd be bad at me. And I'd be laying in right. bed like, come on, right, we're going to fight all Let's day. It's just not. Like, right. if I, but it's, I think I want to sleep for an extra half an hour and it's worth the fight. <laughs> so I remember, I remember one fight. This was okay. So at one, one time we're fighting over me not going to church. And I go, Norma, I don't know. Why do you want to go to church? I said, you're not really a Christian. <laughs> like I used to, I said, I, I used to be a Christian. Oh, so I know what I know they what are they... and you're not one. So let's just not go why to are church. We, why, are why are we doing, doing this? this? So anyway. I yeah, love it. No, it's it's yeah so that that didn't go over well <laughs> <laughs> good thing yeah, yeah yeah but but then you know but the thing is when i would when i would be with frank like i knew like i could talk tozer i could talk finney i yeah. could talk all, I this got stuff. all this so right. he couldn't figure me out he was like who is this yeah. young guy you who know seems to have this? leadership wow and so anyway so so i just you know i i don't say it wasn't a crisis it wasn't anything i remember i was driving back from an audition 
Because, you know, in the acting, I had like an agent. I was... Right. I, so, like, I had auditioned. Did you ever see the TV show Step by Step? With, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I auditioned to be the guy who... The stoner <laughs> dude who, like, lived in the van. That could have been me. <laughs> that could have been me. That's... Yeah. So anyway, wow, that's yeah. so great. Isn't that crazy? That it is yeah. so crazy. So, so I'm driving back on the West Side Highway, and I, I honestly, I can't remember exactly what it is, but I just... Norm and I were married at this point, mm -hmm. and we were fighting a lot. Mm -hmm. We were... Because we're both, like... Strong, you know, we're both like kind of yeah, strong personalities, intense, people, intense right. and you know, opinionated. And I, you know, I just I wasn't getting any life from Jesus, and yeah. I wasn't, you know, wasn't a lot of a lot of good to anybody. And so I just I just you know had this moment feeling like my life's unmanageable, and I just and I mm. and I and I just invited Jesus back into my life, driving wow. my car on the West Side Highway, and it's like He kicked the door down. Wow! Like I went home to my apartment, and I put on all my Keith Green records. And I cried. And I was back. This summer, Vineyard USA is hosting our national conference, Making All Things New, at Ridgecrest Conference Center just outside of Asheville, North Carolina, from Monday, July 31st to Thursday, August 3rd. We're creating an experience that'll be great for the entire family, adults, teenagers, and kids, as we focus on evangelism, church planting, and global missions. Registration opens to the public on February 8th with early bird pricing. So make sure to check out vineyardusa.org to learn more and register today. See you on the mountain. So you're just like subsist. You're just barely alive. Just and get, just going and, through. I mean, nobody, you know, just like yeah. whatever, but just a mess. No, inside, no, but I mean inside. You know? Yeah, inside. And then a sure. day like any other day. Yeah, just like just the pressure of everything yeah, kind of got it occurs to me. To and you I like, just like, what am I doing? My life isn't really like it's not good. Yeah, this isn't. I don't like the trajectory of it. Yeah. And it's like, you know, God is real, and I. So I just invited wow. him back in, and it was he just kicked the door down. Wow. You know, and so then I got together with Frank, the the senior pastor, who I hadn't gone for a while because I went. He he got in my face like, "What are you doing? You're throwing away the opportunity that God has." For you. It was mm. good. He gave me, you know, it was good it was for true. him. It was good for him. But I got mad at him. Like I'm going back there. Mm -hmm. So then I call him, and and I said, and I and I went in and I told him what had happened wow. to me, and I told him like where I'd been and why I was why I was such a conundrum wow. to him. And I was like, "But I'm back." I'm wow. like, Jesus, I'm back. And so I, I, it's weird, but it was like, I was back. Yeah, you knew And it. Norm was like, okay, this is this is good. This, this is, is it. This is going to be is much real. better. Because wow. I didn't think we were going to make it if you didn't like right. come back. And so then, you know, it was a growing church. It was a church, probably, I don't know, three, 400 people. Wow. People would come, people come into faith. Like Frank was, a, Frank was, Frank, he's, a, he is a, a, an ex bodybuilder who radically got saved, wow. you know, and just this typical, you know. All the stories. Jersey, yeah, just a typical Jersey. <laughs> Jersey, Jersey pastor guy. And, um, and so, and so he started having me do stuff, you wow. know, like he had me, he had me, uh, do the Wednesday night Bible study and that went well. And then they had Sunday, you know, then he's like, why don't you, why don't you try preach a, you know, like we didn't have like, there weren't things right. like getting people ready for church plan or whatever, but he was intuitively doing he's that He's like, stuff, I'm going to just right? give you some yeah. stuff and then so I'll then meet he, with you. And then he gave me Sunday night and that went well. Wow. You know, cause that was the time where, I mean, back then a pastor right. would have to prepare three separate messages. Oh yeah. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night Bible study. Oh yeah. And so then, you know, then I got like a Sunday morning slot and that went well. And, and then we started having conversations about mm. me becoming the associate pastor. Wow. And I started going through some Nazarene training stuff. And, wow. and so I, be, I became the associate pastor of Living Word Church of the Nazarene. And, and I think what was amazing about it was how it's like God just, God just, just picked me up yeah. and just let me, you know, let me just kind of perfectly be positioned mm even though like the last four years I'd done everything that I possibly could do to run away from God, yeah. that God, you know, that yeah. God placed me where he totally. wanted me. And I remember like when, the, like fast forward, when I was commissioned to plant the North Jersey Vineyard Church, mm. right? It was at a regional conference in 1996. And so, uh, cause I planted in 97. And so all of the like OG, you know, mm. guys who'd come out on the, to the East coast, you know, so, so Lance, but um, wait, wait, wait! But there, you were there's saying more there. It's yeah. a Nazarene church, right? Yeah, I was jumping ahead a little bit. 
<laughs> just because it was relevant. No, I'm sorry. We'll okay, no, there. no, go ahead. Okay. Finish, finish. No, no. Finish. So, but just I'm about. Just like, wait, wait, something so, happened. So we'll come back to it, but okay. how I got there, right? right. But then, you know, uh, John O'Dean was there. Yeah. Mike Trujillano yeah. was there. And all the, you know, all Billy the OG Lander, vineyard all of them. guys, yeah. And so they called up, the, you know, about five or six of us who were planning at that time, and they, mm. they commissioned us, and I was just another, like, undone. Like, yeah. by the, like just like, yeah. I was out with, yeah. like, visions. And what God said to me, He showed me my life. Mm. Like, He showed me all of it. He showed me, like, just in a picture. You know how that, you know, it's just like all of a sudden you just see it. Yeah. Showed me being adopted. Showed me my father issue. Showed wow. me this. Showed me that. Showed me my experience at college. Showed me my acting. Showed me at the time, like, my day job to try to make it as an actor. I was mm. I was working at a, at a group home for emotionally disturbed teenagers. And wow. stuff I learned about psychology from that. And he said, all of these things I've, for I've had in your life is for this. This is what you're for. And I've, and my hand has been on your life the whole time. Wow. And for, for this. And it was just, you know, cause you think like following God's will is a tightrope, And if you right. mess up, but it was like in that moment, just realizing yeah. like, I've done all like of it. God's got me Yeah. and he's, you know, he's going to finish, finish That's what powerful, he started. Man. And so, and just realizing you using the acting, using all these things, even when I was trying to run from him, yeah. was all part of the tapestry yeah. of how he causes all things to work together mm. for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So, so good. So anyway, so to back up then, how do I end up in the Yeah, how do, you, how do you, you go Nazarene yeah. associate? Okay, so here's a fun story. So in, in Living Word, you know, I'm the, there was actually, you know, I was like, there was actually this woman who would call me Young Pastor Phil. That was like her name for me. I was Young Pastor Phil. And uh, so, so I was, I was like the intimacy with God guy. I did right. teach on the Father, Heart of God. Yeah. I loved revivals. Mm. I'd always talk about revivals. Now I had huh. noticed, I would teach classes on revivals because I wanted to experience a real revival, yeah. right? And so I noticed like with worship that whenever there was a vineyard song, like I was like, I really liked the vineyard songs. Mm. It was like intimacy. And, yeah. was, and so I noticed like the vineyard was, uh, was on my radar. So that's all I knew about the right. vineyard. I didn't know anything songs, else was right. this. And so one, we're doing this summer Bible class thing so i'm so frank's teaching one thing someone else teaching something i'm teaching the history of revival mm. and so uh i'm teaching about the the methodist revival and just the manifestations of the holy spirit with wesley yeah. and like the things that would happen and so i'm done with that yeah and so i go up to frank's office and they're all having there's like four or five guys and they're having this conversation about toronto Mm. about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in yeah. Toronto. And they're yeah. like, oh, this is crazy, and this is happening, and that's happening. And I was like, wait, 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 what's happening? You know, and they yeah. say, oh, people are falling down, and it's emotional. Shaking and I was like, and crying. And I was like, I was like right. but that's happening now in the world? Like in a yeah. place where I can drive and I yeah. can go? Because yeah. I was just, I was just, just talking about it. this. Yeah. Right? I'd just been teaching about wow. this. And so that's, and so, sh and so shortly after that, me and Frank and this other, this other guy, went out to a John Maxwell conference in San Diego. Mm. And so we decided, well, let's shoot up to Anaheim and let's wow. let's see what's yeah. going on up there. Yeah. And so we went to their like Friday night renewal service mm -hmm. and it was it was weird. It wasn't it wasn't you know, it was just right. like it wasn't like you said to your point, it wasn't like this dynamic thing. That right. It was amazing. Right. And I wouldn't even say I necessarily like really powerfully felt the presence of the Holy Spirit. Right. Because it was just so many weird manifestations and I never right. seen anything like, like that. What is this? What right. is this? But I, but when I was in their bookstore, remember the Anaheim Vineyard oh, yeah, bookstore, and you go up like a couple steps, and they had this this section which was all like artwork. Mm -hmm. So I was looking at this painting, like right like after the service, I was looking at the painting of the woman washing Jesus's feet with mm -hmm. her hair. And while I'm looking at that, God like God spoke to me, like kind of the voice of God, mm -hmm. saying, "This is your family." Wow. And so and so I'd also bought at that same time Jack Deere's book, Surprised by the Power mm -hmm. of, the, of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So I read it cover to cover on the plane ride home, and I'm like, this I guess is what I've been this looking This is for. what I'm doing. Wow. But then, this is, you know, as far as, you know, but this is the story. I just what, what I could share, what I can't share. So at the end <laughs> of the plane ride, Frank comes up to me, and he says, hey, Phil, I need you to give me a three-year commitment. Because mm. we're going into this capital campaign yeah, and the church this is, is a big growing. deal. And I think I may want to do something else and I may, you know, maybe prepare you to, to turn the church, you know, right. to turn you. And I got this, you know, future but and now I you're want like, your commitment. Whoa, but I'm like, wait a minute. I think God just told me yeah, that I'm wow. supposed to come into the vineyard. And so I went home and I talked with my wife about it. She didn't know anything about the vineyard. She didn't know anything of this. But what she did say is she said, I don't think you're supposed to give Frank 
the that three commitment. Years. Wow. But I rationalized it. And so at this point, my son is born mm. and I'm like, well, how am I going to live? How am I, you know, what's going to happen? Yeah. And so I thought, okay, well, well, I guess I could do all the cool vineyard stuff, find out more about the vineyard, but just stay here, be the associate, be the pastor here right. and just kind of do it Hang here. In there. And so I gave him that commitment. And then, um, <laughs> this is where it's just, so, so a few months later, things got kind of intense. Like there was like a fight that was going on oh, between, in, the church. in the church and a couple of the, a couple of the board members in the parking lot after a particularly difficult meeting were frustrated. I don't know if they meant it or not or what, but they're like, that's it. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to make a change and we're going to make you the senior pastor. Oh my gosh. So, <laughs> just like that. Yeah. And again, I don't know if they were serious. It might've just been frustration. But at that moment I said, I said, you know what guys, I'm not supposed to be here. Three months earlier, God called me to be in the vineyard, and I didn't, and I didn't do it. And so, I gotta and go. so I've got to give my resignation, and I've got to come into the, I've got to oh, come into the vineyard. My and so the next Sunday, I showed up at Norm and I showed up at the Manhattan Vineyard with my Trigiano, with no job, no plan. I, yeah, no, I had, I had a, I had a foot. Like I was working in, like, um, actually, I, I'd, I'd, I'd worked with in a group home for emotionally disturbed teenagers. Right. And then that turned into, I was doing like this part-time thing for working with adult schizophrenics oh for uh, this mental hospital. So I was able to kind of go, go into that and do that, do that like full time. But, but that, but that's a pretty big turn. Like now I'm just going to go in, I'm out of this church. I'm out of this church. And I, oh, I'm yeah, going to go no. to my second vineyard ever. Yeah. Yeah. How After. does this, no, it was, it was totally, <laughs> it was Abraham. It was like coming wow. to, it was like, leave everything, you know, and come in. And then plus, as you can imagine, this was like pre cell phone. So like people are calling it, but you know, the, the landline, but we can't answer the phone. Cause it's like, it's a little messy. Right. Uh -huh. And so we're just having to kind of like lay low. Right. And uh, so it was, it was a very painful time. Dude. And so, and so, so we showed painful. up, we showed up at the Manhattan vineyard. And not knowing, and Mike wasn't, Mike and Char weren't there that week. And so someone else was speaking and it was, you know, it was kind of like, what is, you know, we, like, we don't know this is, what is this exactly? <laughs> what did what I, what is this? What did I leave for? Okay. And, uh, wow. but then, and then I remember, you know, it's funny that the, I think the second time I went, Lance Pitluck was speaking. And mm -hmm. so I knew Lance was like, you know, kind mm -hmm. of a, authorized, was, right. authorized, right. Was, you know, had right. a position in there. And I remember like being in the restroom at the same time that Lance was there and like, I need to talk to him. And I was like, I don't know what to say, but I had this moment of like, how, how, how does how this work? How do we work? do this? Yeah. How does, how does this work? So, oh man. So, all right. So, so anyway, so remember there's this all started like with the whole Toronto vineyard. Thing, right. right. And so I'm like, all right, I don't know how it's going to work. How am I going to, what, what, how am I going to get into ministry? How's, yeah. for my what family? are the all rules? This, how does this What's work? What's the track? Right. What's the track? And so, so we have my son, my wife is pregnant with our second child. I'm supposed to go this on this weekend. I'm going to go up to Toronto mm -hmm. and seek God and find out what's see, going to happen for the do. future. See right. what we do. My wife, like that week, has a miscarriage. Oh. And so I'm like, okay, well, I won't go. She's like, no, no, I'm okay. You should go because mm. Norma's a rock star. Norma's mm. like really, really amazing. Yeah. And so, so I drive up. I drive up to Toronto. You know, we just had a miscarriage. I don't know what about my future. I've got this, tra you know, this like weird thing that happened in this church and yeah. you know, this, this trauma of, you know, leaving there, being the associate pastor. And so I get up to Toronto and, you know, I walk in and it's, did you ever, did you ever get, that was that, no. bef that was before your No, time. it was around the time, okay. but we would, the Columbus Vineyard would send people up, yeah, but I just, but never, just never went. went. Yeah. So you go in there, there's thousands of people there, right? right? So the worship is going on and it was just like, you know, the presence of the Lord, but it's just a lot, you know, and yeah. I mean, just could feel Full like, right. well, I know this, but it's way more than I've ever felt before. Yeah. So then during worship, I get an open vision, like, just like I see Boom. this, this thing that like stays with me to this day about, mm. about my calling, what God's going to use me to do. Mm. And it's like, and yeah. And what it was, was like, it was kind of almost like this, you know, this, this like Roman kind of times where, where all the conquer, you know, the people are kind of coming, coming in to like present like mm. tribute to the King kind of a thing. Right. Mm. So you're kind of coming with banners, you know, and you've got all these, mm. these people that you're with, the armies are coming in. Mm. And so in this vision, Jesus is on this like veranda 
And, and there's like thousands and thousands of people and I'm leading in a group of people. Mm. And Jesus kind of looks at me and like, you know, kind of gives me the equivalent of a thumbs up, you mm. know, kind of like, there's still a calling on your life. I'm yeah. still with you. And so I have this, it's weird. I mean, but it's this vision and it was real to me. It was very yeah. real. It was like a movie that is like, okay, there's a future. There's a ministry that God mm. has me. He's going to use me to influence people and, you know, yada, yada. So anyway, so then it's time uh, after the worship, John or not who's the senior pastor of the Toronto mm -hmm. Vineyard, he said, we have a special guest uh, with us tonight. It's my good friend from New York City. It's Pastor Mike Terigiano. Oh, my goodness. Now, Mike and I, had we'd met a couple times, right. but we didn't really know each other very well. Right. We started starting that kind of that process. Yeah. I had no idea he was going up there. He didn't know I was going to be up there. Wow. And, and so the moment he said, like, that was like so weird. And then God spoke to me and he said, mm. Phil, you are exactly where you need to be. Yeah. I am working in your life and mm. this man is going to be very important to you. Wow. And, you know, that night, it just, you know, powerful encounters with the Holy Spirit. I remember, you know, Mike saw me and he was like, what is, what's, yeah, what's what are you Phil doing, doing here? Doing here? Right. You know, and I remember as we're going into the ministry time, Mike, Mike, what he said to me, and he said, comes up to me and he says, he says, just be hungry, be like a hungry dog, you know, like when it comes to ministry, <laughs> it's, you know, a typical Mike kind of way. Right. So I was a hungry dog. And so, yeah, so it was, it was kind of very, very, very supernatural, Dude. you know, very, like a very... Like God just kind of picked me up. But then, so then from then in Toronto, yeah. you know, the vision and stuff to then planting, what's the, right. how, well, how long is that? Uh, it was, it wasn't that long. A couple years. If even. Wow. Right. And so, cause I had, I had a lot of, you had a lot was, of training. And so Mike just kind of needed to, you know, vineyardize yeah. me. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and then he's like, Go and for I it. had during that time, I got everything that John Wimber ever did, all the VHS, right, things, right, right. All the cassette. and over the course of three you're months, you're listening, I, you're I watching, you're reading, all. right. You know, consumed it all. And so, and so this is, you know, as far as with all of the assessments and everything Dude. that we have now, yeah, the, yeah, there's the, none of that. The <laughs> way that I got released as a church planner. So, so I get called in to, you know, to Mike's office in the city. Yeah. And so Lance is there because yeah. Lance is the regional overseer yeah. for the East yeah. Coast. And so I'm meeting Lance. And so I tell Lance my story. Yeah. And then Lance looks at me and says, sounds like God. <laughs> and so... I believe in that moment, <laughs> yeah. I was a release video yeah, church it happened. I right. think that's how I think that's how it worked. Dude. So I, I started a started a, a small group then in mm. my my house in Burgerfield, my apartment, mm. and I was just it was just about four or five. It was like me and my wife, this other couple that lived in Jersey, but went to Mike's church, and like one other person. And the living room got filled up and then, uh, but it was, I mean, it was, it was renewal time. And so like right. the ministry times would be it's, kind of It's intense. happening in so your like, house. So right. my landlord who lived on the, you know, below me, he would say like, why are you guys, I, I thought you were having a Bible study up there. And I'm like, we are. And he's like, it doesn't sound why like a Bible study. Why is there shouting? Right, right. right. Like, yeah. like, why are people and then, screaming? Yeah, right. And then there ended up being, there was another group in another city that mm. wanted to, that were interested in the vineyard. So I went down and I led a group there and then wow. something else opened up somewhere else. And so had three small groups and it was a typical kind of inside out yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. kind of plan Slow where you multiply small groups. Yep. We started a once a, once a month sneak preview service and, and, uh, and then in wow. January of 97, started weekly with wow. the uh, church, the work, weekly Sunday morning church services. Okay. Yep. Interesting. Cause then I'm trying to square that. So when did Tyndall plant? About a year and year and a half later. I was going to say yeah. it'd be in mm -hmm. the same window. Yeah. Right. And it's funny to think because the sneak preview thing, I remember he did that and I'd never heard that before. I guess that was the playbook. Yeah, it was. Time, it was. Apparently. Yeah. It was. And to think about all the churches that are being planted in that little hmm. swath of time. It's mm -hmm. a lot of churches, mm -hmm. definitely in the East, especially. And, you know, it, it's funny how, you know, when I'll have conversations like this and I'll talk to the stuff we do now. Where, you know, we'll do this amount of money and a logo and a website yeah. and 45 assessments and psychological training and sure. stuff, which I love, by the way. I'm not saying we shouldn't do all that stuff. Right. But in what, I, what I'm always struck by is how at the end of all of it, you just got to gather a few people, disciple them, wait on the Lord, yeah. train leaders, multiply leaders. And now to church your size – you still do that. Like you never, you never stop doing that. No. Now you do it a little differently because you have other things you have to do and there's now ministries that are, but the sort of like bedrock, the center of it all is what you were doing in your home. Yeah. 
Yeah. So we, what, what I would do when I first started the church, so I had a, I had a bunch of young guys around and, you know, that were, we're kind of doing this, doing this together. Yeah. And so every year, you know, we would watch Signs, Wonders, and Church Growth, the 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 uh, videotapes. So great. Of, you know, just that classic John Wimber, yeah. that whole seminar. And then we would do a conference. We would set up like a Saturday conference. And we it was like, it was like, we were like, it was like show and tell. We'd, we'd be just like, do I'll, it. I'll play John Wimber. You, you, play, <laughs> you play Blaine Cook, right? And we would just, and we would just, just do the, see if it we happens, would do the things right. and it would, and it would, and it would happen. happen. And so here's a crazy thing. So wow. I was talking to, I think it was Costa Mitchell. Because one of the guys who was there at the time hmm. was a South African guy named Andy Vanderbile. Hmm. And Andy was there because his wife, Shan, was a physical therapist. And so she's there, there from South Africa on a, on a, she has a work visa. Doing so that. he can't, he can't work. So right. I get this like free associate pastor and right. we're hanging out, you know, Perfect. you know, as a worship leader, we do this stuff. And so he was there for a couple of years, like during the time mm. when we would watch Signs, Wonders and Church Growth and, and do this. And I think he would play Blaine Cook. So great. <laughs> so, so great. And so anyway, so I'm talking, so he went back to South Africa and he got involved and he's a pastor, a vineyard pastor there. Mm. And so I'm talking to Costa Mitchell a few years ago and I was like, oh, Andy Vanderbile was in my church for a while. And, and I said, oh, it was a great season when we were just getting started. And Costa said, you know, Andy is one of our best Holy Spirit equippers mm. in South Africa. Like he's really wow. gifted at that. And wow. I was just thinking like God really honored, yeah. you know, like we just get together. We don't know what we're doing. Totally. And we didn't have any, you know, I mean, Mike obviously was training me, but, sure. but this, like Mike wasn't a part of this. It was kind of, and we were just kind of trying to figure it out, Wow, you know, and God, God just honored it. But, the, it, but the, it it's such a, it's such an encouragement. And yet it's also a small challenge or correction to so many that are getting into this. Like, listen, just just do, do it. the things. <laughs> just like yeah. watch things. Try it. Get it in your heart. Get excited. Yep. And then just try some things. And if there's grace on it, you know, if it's meant to, to be, the Lord will give you favor mm. and it becomes a thing. Mm -hmm. That sort of like initiative was so present in the vineyard specifically in like a window that man i hope god breathes on us again for that you know like just yeah. give us guts to just try things when they're not trained you know like yeah within the life of your church every time i talk to church planners i'm like i i have your perfect church plant training they're like oh what i go plant a church in your church hmm. just lead a small group yeah. multiply it yeah do some Holy Spirit nights at somebody's house. Just do that mm -hmm. over and over mm. because you'll know you can plant a church because mm -hmm. you just did it. You know, like, like yeah. Just do a practice one yeah. and your pastor will love it. You know, if, you, if your, your pastor will be like, yeah, sure. This is great. Yeah, yeah do more of it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah build, build the church by planting right. more and more small groups. Do it. Yeah. Do the whole thing. And if you're with a pastor that doesn't want you to do that, you can come to my church. Exactly. <laughs> find, a, find a different pastor. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, but it, and that's what, you know, I was, I was thinking about just a couple of weeks ago, you know, we did our, we had our, just a, a Holy Spirit training because we've got a lot of new people who are in the totally. church. It's kind of a new season. Start over, right. So, uh, yeah, and so we had, we had about 75 people come to this, this training. So great. And so I just, I taught the five-step prayer model. Yep. For the, I think the 1,432nd totally. time. Yes. And so taught the five-step prayer model, mm. got, you know, word of knowledge, got somebody to come up to get prayer, had three people praying for Just them do the whole while thing. I did the play-by-play. -play. I love it. The person who's getting prayer is experiencing a deliverance, and I'm like, you'll notice how this is happening, and that, yes. you know, and everyone is just so amazing. And then, and then we get all the, you know, people lined up. We get ten more people to yeah. pray for. Get four or five people yeah. around each one, and you know, everybody got healed, and everyone boom, had boom, these boom. stories. And it just struck me as like, man, I've been doing this yes. for 25 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it still works. Like it's, it's still, it's still and it's great. And it's and it's great. And these are all yes. new people, new yes. people to the church, new I people to this. It. Like a lot of them, new to faith, and they're blown away. Like even now, like and like people are just they can't get enough of telling me their stories about the word of knowledge. And we prayed, and the pain went away. Totally. And I'm like, yeah, that's that's what happens. And so I would say I think that my my story is a church planter and a leader. Yeah is is just like have some grit just keep doing it yeah just don't give up yeah you know and and just like you don't have to re just just run the plays yeah. and just you know and just continue to right. run the plays yeah 
and and leave room for God to show up. Yeah. And He's going to show up. Yeah. And He's going to He's going to touch people's lives and yes. and preach the gospel. And uh, and and invest in people. So and, encouraging, you know. And and God is faithful, and He That's does it. So encouraging. It's such a gift. So, if you were to so so let's let's talk to one person because we're doing it right now. But All right. Aim in your mind and think about a pastor who maybe loves the Lord. They're preaching. They're leading a small group, and they're going. I really want to grow in Holy Spirit ministry, like the kinds of things you're describing. Yeah. Like you just described, put the people in the room deliverance, I'm talking them through it, yeah. these people get healed, prophetic word. They hear that and they go, wow, that would be awesome. Like, I want to do that, but I don't know how to do that, or I don't do that. Yeah. Do they go get the old videotapes? Like, what, what, what? I, why not? <laughs> I mean, they're good. <laughs> they are good. They're really, they're, it's, it's good. <laughs> right. Yeah. But what would, what would you recommend? Like, they're, they look at you and go, Phil, tell me, tell me what to do. I, yeah. Where do I begin? So I would, I think that it begins with a conviction mm. that what we have to offer is the presence of God. Mm. Like there's not, you know, it's, it's that Exodus 33, you know, mm. where, where, where Moses, like, it's what I pray. I've prayed it over and over and over again for my mm. whole ministry. God, if your presence doesn't show up, yeah. how will the people know that well, there'll be nothing different from, different from us and, and all the other people on the earth. Yeah. And so, so you have that that hunger for the Holy Spirit to show up mm. and you realize that it's, it's about, it's about God's presence period, right. period. But then it's, it's not just, and that's the, that's the thing about, you know, our tribe in the vineyard. Mm. It's not just, okay, well the presence comes and we just, you know, we just kind of sit in it. Well then what, then which way is the power pointed? What are we going to do? We're going to disciple people and we're mm. going to, we're going to pray for people and we're going to mm. teach people to hear from God. And it's going to, it's release not just, them to do we're going to release them to do it. We're going right. to give it away. Uh, and, and I think it's, it's, it's just a matter of with all the different ways we can contextualize the gospel, all mm. the different types of communities that we're in. Yeah. It's, it's about the presence. Yeah. It's about the presence. And I, and I, you know, people like I have a, you know, in my church, I see a lot of people come to faith mm. and we're a very diverse church, you know, and and sometimes people say, well, how do you how do you have that diversity? And it's like there's there's things that you you know, there's a lot of things that you like you need to not do. You have right, to lower to barriers right? Right. You, and not do things that are going to put up walls. Right. And, but yes. really, it's it's like if people are experiencing the presence of the Holy Spirit right. and if they know that like the gospel is being preached and they can bring their son or they can bring their, yes. you know, their husband or whatever to hear the gospel, yes. like people are going to, people are going to cross show up. Right. cultural barriers it's amazing. and are going to show up. But it's, but I, I think it, I think it really just comes to like be hungry yeah, and take risks. Yeah. You know, like there's, I don't think there's any other way to do mm. it than, you know, you've got to be willing to, to look foolish. Just try. You know, and you got to try it and yeah. and have it be like I want I so much want to see people experience the power and presence of the Holy Spirit mm. that if I if I'm going to look stupid a bunch of times along the way, like I'm okay with that. It's worth it. Right. So I remember this one time I'm I'm preaching and uh and it's a it's a pretty full room and I felt like God gave me some words of knowledge at the end of the service, mm. right? And so I'm just doing like a getting ready to do some some healing ministry. Right. And so one of the ways that happens sometimes is I'll just become aware of some different pains or sensations yeah. in my body and be like, right. oh, I think God wants to heal an elbow or right. so I became very aware of pain in my right heel. And mm. I didn't I didn't have any, you know, that wasn't something I had before that. Right. I just became so very aware. Maybe of it. that's God. Right. So I said, I think there's someone here that, you know, you've got pain in your in your right heel. And I think I think God wants to heal you. And and oftentimes we just kind of say, "Come on up," and someone will pray for right. you. But for this, I was like, "Why don't you just raise your hand where who you are? That? And right. who is that?" Right. And so it's just crickets. And so you know, I just kind of wait, and it's a little bit awkward, a little bit uncomfortable. And I was like, you know, I just I think that God just God wants to heal you. I think there's somebody here. Yeah, so just, just raise your hand. Okay. That's all. You don't have to do anything. Right. And still crickets. And I'm like, okay, I make a joke. Like I'm pretty bad at this. And so kind of try to just continue yeah. on with yeah, ministry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then the pain is getting worse. And so then I, I said, you know, let me come back to that. I really think there's someone right. here Just come on. with pain in your right heel Show me and who that it God is. wants to heal you. Yes. And again, it's crickets and there's nothing. And so then I go on with it, finish the service, but it was like awkward, you know? Yeah. And so after the service, always my mother, oh God. 
<laughs> who loves me, who Left loves you me out to dry. and is for me, right. pulls me over oh, because she, so and she's funny. just like, Phil, would you please pray for my, for my right oh, heel? Because my that was me. And I so, love it. so like, if your mother's going to let you like, you know, gonna <laughs> hang you out for dry, that, you know, you can I be know, sure. I and, know. But you have to, you just have to be you willing. Try. You have to yeah. be willing for that. You have to try. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Well, and the amount of people, and I know it's true in your church. The amount of folks that later on described that the way they came to know Jesus in our church was through some kind of an encounter. Mm. Like maybe they'd said yes to Jesus in their heart or they've heard the gospel now preached in our church a few times. But what seals it is some kind of prophetic moment, some moment where someone prays with them or they hear a story where they're like, I'm going to ask God to like speak to me. Mm. And then he does. So it's it's also important to realize that when we're doing this kind of stuff, it's not just magic tricks for Christians or something no. like like no. like 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 people who don't know what anything is have signs. I mean, that's what the that scriptures call them that point them to Jesus. Hmm. The signs aren't to themselves; they're to Jesus, to the kingdom. And so, when people have these experiences, they get to watch them even next to them, like they see a friend like healed or a prophetic word for them or whatever. Yeah. And they've been skeptical or they're not sure. And all of a sudden they're like, wait a minute, this is real. Mm. This isn't just like a helpful yeah. thought for life. This isn't just a life enhancement class. Mm -hmm. This is like a substance. There's like a weight. There's a presence to this. I just don't understand how people do ministry without this. I mean, I, I how do you... How do you well, do it? And the, and the thing is too, like when you're, if you're able to see a, a culture in your church where yeah. like every Sunday there's, this is there, what people, we do. there are people who don't know Jesus yet, yes. but the presence of the Holy Spirit is there yeah. and people like all of a sudden they begin to realize that like God is real yes, and that, and that God is for them and there's something to this yeah. and just the way their life lights up and yeah. the, it, it that really is like what it's all about. Like it that's really the most is. wonderful thing. Yeah. When you see the the presence and the reality of God, mm. not just to heal us and comfort us, right. but to also like be part of the way that somebody goes from death to life. Yes. It's like that's there's nothing better than no, that. No, it's it's the wake and up. And so the combination, if you can, you know, a culture where people are inviting their unchurched friends yes. to come. But the, the presence and power of the Holy Spirit is there. And I always talk about pursuing the Holy Spirit, but with on-ramps. Yeah. So that we're explaining things to people and we're yeah. contextualizing yep. and we're creating space for the Holy Spirit. Yes. You know, just let, you know, just trusting that the Holy Spirit's gonna move. Yes. He is like like my testimony in in pastoring this church is he is really faithful yeah. to to fill up whatever, whenever we make room for him, yeah. he's faithful to come and show up. Amen. Yeah. Not an either or. Yeah. Both and. Yeah. Well, Phil, I, I'd love to come and talk to you some more. We can do more on uh, how you were at Wimber and Blaine Cook together. Well, uh, no, I would usually, I would be Wimber. You were <laughs> yeah, I would do that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I would love to hear more because I think we want to keep doing more training. Yeah. Of course, we have this series that's leading up to Pentecost that is ministry in the spirit. And on Pentecost, we're asking the Holy Spirit to fill the vineyard afresh. And so I'm, I'm believing that. The things we talk about as vineyard history is not vineyard history. It's our way of being. Mm. And I'm brave enough to imagine that God could give us more. Yeah. That we could be a part of seeing the kind of wave we saw move across our country, that that could happen in our lifetime again. I yep. have faith for that with people that will just pray and ask and seek that are hungry because I love your thought, it, you know, ministry has to flow from your convictions, what you really mm -hmm. live and want. This is not, you can't like just hope a thing will happen to everyone that isn't right. flowing out of your life. Yeah. So at the very least, leaders have to say, Lord, I need your spirit. I need your presence. I want to know what it is to experience your presence so I can minister to others out of abundance, not just out of lack. Yeah. So may it be that the Lord visits all of our, at least our yeah. pastors yeah. to be able to move our churches. Well, I'm, you know, I, I'm hopeful 
that what we're seeing is the beginning of, of just a fresh move of the Holy Spirit. May it be. I've got I've got a lot of young, you know, 19, 20, 21 year olds. Yeah. They are hungry for God. They're oh, like man. really, really leaning into like there's a you know, there there just seems to be a desperation Amen. for like the reality of, of the Holy Spirit. And so what a gift. If do we if we get to see that and 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 be able to bless it. Yeah. You know, uh, that would be, that would be amazing. That's what I want. Yeah. Well, thanks, Phil. Thanks for taking time. The We Are Vineyard podcast is a production from the team at Vineyard USA. If you've been enjoying the podcast, here's a few ways you can help us. Leave us a review on the podcast platform of your choice. This helps more people find us. Connect with us online for additional resources. Our website is vineyardusa.org and we're on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at at VineyardUSA. Thanks for listening. See you next week.